Steven Stomsky with Stomsky Racing. In our last video, we started to set up the cam timing on a 911 engine. We installed the cams and set the parallelism of the, the sprockets to make sure that they were aligned to the lay shaft. And we used our SR008 to do that. Today, we're going to install the cam shafts and make sure that the valve last is adjusted before we start to time the cams themselves. In order to set the valve lash on this engine, we're going to use our SR9, SR097 valve lash adjuster. You can use the P213 tool, but it's not quite as accurate as using a travel gauge to indicate the actual amount of travel. As the feeler gauge implies, it requires a feel to do that. But when you use a dial indicator, it gives you a very, very precise indicator of what your valve lash is set to. First thing we do before we set the valves and before we install the rockers is we install the camshafts themselves and make sure and we make sure that they're in proper on proper sides of the engine and that the engine is roughed in at top dead center that the cam cams are pointed upward that the, the woodruff key is up or the punch mark key is up and that the left cam is in the left housing and the right cam is in the right housing it's a simple, simple way to check to make sure that the cams are in the proper location is to look at the two end lobes that are closest to the bolt end of the camshaft. And the left side looks like an L. The right side looks closer to like rabbit ears as an R rabbit ears. We make sure that that is on the right side. Our SR097 valve lash adjuster allows you to mount just about any indicator that you want. Today I'm going to be demonstrating the tool using a digital gauge, but you can use any AGD style gauge. It mounts in quickly and simply into the tool. If you're trying to measure valve lash when the engine's in the car, you might want to use a smaller gauge such as this quarter inch gauge, quarter inch travel gauge. It's smaller, works in confined spaces a little bit better. Our first step is that we're going to mount this tool onto cylinder number one. So as we start to mount our tool over the rocker, first notice that we have a lot of play on, on, this, on the adjuster. Start off that way. Slide the tool in place. But notice that the, the gauge is held in place at an angle inside this barrel half. And it's, it's supposed to be at that angle so that when you've locked down all the thumb screws in place, your contact will come in and hit right over the adjuster screw. Now, first thing you do after locking down the gold thumb screw is make sure that all the, the black thumb screws are, are secure as well and that you're right where you need to be. From here, the only th adjuster the only thumb screw that you need to need to change is going to the one on the back which will allow you to pivot the tool out of place so that you can make the adjustments and in order to do this I pull back on the plunger so that we're not hitting hitting the dial indicator at all pull back on the plunger get that off of the adjuster screw loosen the pivot screw and slide the tool out of place I take a screwdriver and I dial down the adjuster screw until you contact the valve and that there is zero play. I don't go past that, but just make sure that there's zero play. The thread count on this adjuster screw is eight by one, meaning that if you go one full rotation of the screw, you're going to travel one millimeter. And we're only, the tolerance on here is four thousandths of an inch or one tenth of a millimeter. And therefore, what we're looking for approximately is one-tenth of one revolution of adjustment. You could ballpark that by going to about a quarter of a turn and then splitting it. Lock down your... You don't have to get too crazy. Hit this point. Pivot the tool back into place over the adjuster screw, adjusting screw everything down, turn on our gauge and zero it out and then check and we're at 
six hundredths of a millimeter. And we're going to simply pivot the tool out of out of the way. They're not free, and this a little bit more. Back in, zero, and check, and we're exactly at one-tenth of a millimeter. So far, we have set the valve lash on number one intake. Proceed next to do number, number one exhaust, and then number four intake and number four exhaust. And once that's done, then we can go ahead and we can actually set up our digital degree wheel, our Digidix, find top dead center, and then we'll be able to properly time the cams, and we'll be doing all that in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. See you soon. Thank you.